Hello and welcome to the River Lee in Tottenham, North London. It's a crowded river with narrowboats packed along the banks, every inch of mooring space taken. I'd come here to see a particular boat, which on the face of it is much like any other. It's got a bow with a well deck, windows along the sides, the name painted nicely on the back, and a traditional stern where you steer from. But the whole boat is tiny. The maximum length of a narrowboat on the British Canal system is about 72 feet, and most people take 57 as a good go-anywhere sort of length. But this one is at the other extreme. It's only 24 feet long. And perhaps that is best illustrated with the time-honoured tradition of the stride. One, two, three, four, and a small one, just to get to the end. The boat was built in 1991, um, same age as me, and was built by m and Narrowboats. It's got an 18 horsepower Nanny Diesel, um, two leisure batteries and a starter battery. Looking around the boat from the outside, you see a small locker for propane bottles for cooking. An offset door to the well deck sits aside a large bus type window. The usual complement of mooring ropes are on the roof and there's enough space for a couple of solar panels. A chimney hints at the heating within. Just inside the rear doors are the engine instruments and controls. Like many narrowboaters, Ben had limited experience before he bought Bramble. I had only been on one um, and it was for a very short party, um, but I've, I've always been ar around the canals near Camden Town um, and I'd, I'd, I knew that I'd always wanted one eventually. I saw it on a marketplace online uh, and went to visit it straight away. It was quite close to where I was, so uh, I snapped it up quite quickly. The interior is minute, but has everything you need to live. On the left as you enter, there's a shower compartment with a composting toilet at the bottom. Directly opposite is a galley with plenty of workspace, cupboards under, a two-burner gas hob and a sink. There's a little shelving on the wall for catering knickknacks. Behind the shower lies the wood-burning stove, which can easily heat a space this small. Finally, at the bow, the bed occupies the width of the boat and doubles as a seating area in the day. The space underneath is not wasted, of course. The frame lifts to reveal capacious storage below. With such large windows, the boat feels bright and not at all cramped or gloomy inside. Rugs help the feeling of warmth, while wall hooks and shelves means there's space for bits and bobs. There's lots of storage, uh, the whole of the under the bed, uh, all the kitchen cupboards and uh, storage areas are quite useful. The space in itself is lovely, but I think it would be nice to have a, a couple of extra centimetres head height, because uh, especially when I'm drinking out of a bottle, you, you tend to hit the ceiling with it, so uh, that would be nice. And uh, when I'm laying down in bed, I can just about touch either side with my head and feet. As Ben mentioned, the engine is a small diesel, which sits under the back deck, and is helpfully accessible for maintenance. Fwoar! Look at that lovely dry bilge! Like me, Ben has a tray under the stern gland to catch water drips. Also easy to access is the weed hatch, in case of anything fouling the propeller. A 24-foot boat is light and easy for one person to manage. Being in central London and the London area a lot, there's uh, minimal mooring spaces, so having such a short boat, it really makes my job a lot easier to find a mooring. Um, and also in the narrower stretches, I can turn around on a sixpence. I get so much enjoyment out of being on the water. Uh, the gentle rocking at night, the sunshine in the morning. Um, yeah, it's just magical, really. The calmness and slowness of, of life. Uh, having grown up in London, um, it's surprising how busy the city life can be. And then you get along the canals, even though there's some quite central, uh, it's very relaxing and much quieter.
Benz isn't the only tiny narrowboat on the system, of course. On the other side of London, at Teddington Lock, there's a secure set of moorings where an even smaller narrowboat lives. This is the 22-foot Miss Tadpole, who fell into her owner's hands two years ago through one of those peculiar twists of fate. We need to cut back to June 2020 lockdown and people were just allowed to go back out again on the rivers and I was canoeing with a friend from Ham which is just down the river here on the Thames and we were canoeing down and there's a little beach opposite Miss Tadpole and we stopped off at the beach and we got our little camping stove out an espresso pot and we were having a coffee and I was looking across at this tiny little narrow boat thinking how cute is that so I brought the canoe over and I had a little poke around lifted up the shutters had a little peek inside and I had a little dream and I thought, oh, I wish I could have a little tiny narrow boat like that. It'd be so cute. Cut to two weeks later and my friend was back canoeing here. And then the previous owner was on the deck and he shouted over, my friend Lynn loves your boat. She said it's for sale. So we swapped numbers and about three days later I came to look at her and within a week I'd bought her. It's fair to say that Tadpole is still a restoration work in progress, as Lynn uncovered various surprises during the initial refit. Once I bought her, I started kind of doing things and realised there was quite a lot of chipboard on the boat and a lot of sodden, damp, very expanded chipboard. And then as soon as I kind of started uncovering more and more things, I realised there was a lot of water, there was a lot of damp, there was some steel which needed welding. And so although my initial plan had been that I'd be sort of having little mini trips and holidays by August 2020, I then was basically elbow deep in rust and grime and dirt for about the next year. <laughs> Coming in from the back, there's a board with engine controls, the engine's a tiny diesel accessible from inside the boat. Steps lead down to the cabin and Lynn has an ingenious plan to make this a composting toilet with the boards cut so as to lift revealing a space for the bucket. Curtains will give privacy. A single room, the interior is going for beach hut vibes with lots of recycled materials and a bright, fun feeling. Pretty much everything is reclaimed, found, borrowed, off a skip. My uncle George has given me stuff, like my mum's sort of foraged stuff from my granddad's old house that's also here. Um, my friend Lorna has done loads of work as well and I feel really indebted to all the people that have helped too, but it has been really fun and also I love that other people have had an investment in her and, you know, like Lorna's mum made the curtains um, with Lorna and I'd had this fabric for years and years, um, this 50s fabric, and so it's just really nice and that other people and strangers on the internet check in to see how she is and, you know, things like that. So, yeah, it's been super fun and I just love being by the river. The sofa along one side makes up into a decent bed. With a substantial cupboard unit providing a place to put things as well as being the kitchen area. With this fantastic phone horn for playing back music, you just rest your phone in it and it comes out louder. There's a hidden cupboard in the bulkhead for kitchen essentials as well as bedding. Another hidden cupboard in the gunnels is where tools can be stored, a great use of a lot of shallow space. A folding table can be used for work or dining. And how smart is this slimline writing bureau, which I love. The wisp of a stove is unlike any other I've seen in a narrowboat. And steps lead up to a tiny well deck for sitting in the sun with a water tank underneath the deck and a gas locker in the bow. Beach Hut was the aim, and I'd say it's been achieved, and much more, during the pandemic. I work in the theatre and I didn't have any work, and I was really struggling being indoors all the time, and I was really struggling not working or seeing my friends, and I didn't really have that much to do, and so... I basically came here every day, roped in various different 
unemployed friends from the theatre business who also came to help me out and it became an absolute lifesaver for sort of mental health and to be physically active and outside so I was swimming in the river and doing all of this work and having never really done any DIY or anything like that before it was a really steep learning curve but also kept me super busy kept me super active and there were times when I was sort of crying and tearing out my hair and just thinking this is never going to be in any fit state for anything what on earth have I done to sort of slowly falling back in love with her and you know and feeling really proud of all the work that I'd done and you know learning about bilges and ballast and our troll and red oxide and all of these things that I was covered in for months and months. Lynn's plan now is to get the engine and gearbox fixed by spring so she can cruise along the river but she's still open to offers. If anyone wants to come and help me, <laughs> uh, I'm always looking for people to come and help. If you want to come and do some painting or some sanding or, you know, we've still got some electrical issues going on here. So if anyone wants to volunteer their services, then Lynn and Miss Tadpole will always get the kettle on for you.